Welcome to our five-minute Bible study today in the book of Genesis. We're ready to begin to look at the story of Jacob. Now you recall that in the book of Genesis, the latter half of the book, there are three great patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are the men through whom the promise will flow. And of course, out of Jacob's 12 sons will come the 12 tribes of Israel, the nation, God's chosen people through whom God will eventually send the Savior. But as we start the story of Jacob, we see that initially Jacob was not the man that his father Isaac had been, nor was he the man that his father Abraham was. He was not a great man of faith. He will get there. But in the beginning of the story, there are so many character flaws in Jacob, we are astounded. He is a story of a man who needs salvation, who needs the saving touch of God. And we're going to see that work in his life. And, and so as we look at the story of Jacob, we're going to see he's a profound example of how God can save us. Even when we work against his covenant and we flow against his way, he saves us. Now, you remember that Jacob was a twin, he and his brother Esau, twin brothers. Esau actually was the older by just a few minutes, of course. But though Jacob was the younger, God had said, it is through Jacob I will send my promise. He will be the, the one through whom the covenant promises flow. But in the younger part of his life, Jacob was not, was not the man he should be. The first part of his story, the first character flaw we see is about the birthright. <clears throat> As I said, Esau, Esau and Jacob were twins, but Esau was the older. Therefore, he was the one through whom the birthright would go. He was the one who would be the head of the clan, typically. That was not God's plan but in this case, but, but Esau had the right of birthright. And then we see Esau lose it one day. It's in Genesis chapter 25. It says, once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country. He was famished. He said to Jacob, quick. Let me have some of that red stew because I'm, I'm so hungry. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first that you will sell it to me. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. So Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, he got up and left. And Esau despised his birthright. Interesting story. First, we see that Esau was not a man of great forethought. He was willing to sell his birthright for a bowl of soup. Not the smartest guy in the world. But Jacob, Jacob took advantage of the situation. Jacob, in effect, stole his brother's birthright. See, what well, he sold it to him. Yeah, I know, but it was, he was taking advantage of the situation, taking advantage of his brother's foolishness. And God does not look upon that well. You know, sometimes in our day, we have a natural disaster and, and certain people sometimes raise their prices exorbitantly to take advantage. We, we've seen this happen before. It always makes us angry that someone would take advantage of a situation to make an unfair profit. But that's what Jacob was, was doing. He was taking advantage of Esau's hunger and Esau's foolishness. And God did not look upon it well. Later in the Bible, the New Testament uh, the Bible will say that Jacob really was a thief. He was a thief. He's just not a good man. And yet God's going to send the promise through him. Uh, Jacob needs some saving. So Jacob is the example of one who does not start well, but by the grace of God, his life is going to get turned around. I just wanted you to understand that, that even in our life, when there are certain things that are not of God, those can be changed. God can come to us and places where we have mistakes and where we have flaws, even where we have sins. And he can save us and he can forgive us and he can turn us around. He's going to do that with Jacob. Jacob, before this is over, is going to be a man of God. He's not right now. <laughs> He's a man who steals his brother's birthright for a bowl of soup. But God's going to work with him just as God works with us to redeem us, to save us, and to set us on the path of great salvation. So as we begin the story of Jacob, we He's not where he ought to be, but God's not done with him yet. And before this story is over, we're going to see God's grace to save. And it's a wonderful story indeed. Hope you have a great day today. I hope you know the blessings of God upon you. 
And I'll look forward to seeing you next time for our five-minute Bible study in the book of Genesis. Have a great day.